I haven't worked out an intro for these videos, so I'm gonna have to kind of um, make this up as I go. So a little over a year ago, December of 2019, I was uh, just starting the writing process. And it's the first script I've ever written that's based on another idea. It was adapted from a story that my wife has been writing for close to 10 years, if not a little longer. And when she brought it to me, uh, I read it, and my first thought was, this is impossible to adapt in my current sort of skill level, budget level, whatever. Uh, and my second thought was that I really, really like the characters, and I'd like to kind of preserve that if we do end up making this. So the first thing I did was write down everyone's names, full names, first, middle, last, on index cards. And on the back side of those index cards, I would write a little biography that I could think of for these characters. And all that information was easily accessible if I needed it. In the original story, the part of the reason it was so hard to adapt directly was it took place in a high school, and that immediately sends up a lot of red flags if you have a zero budget film. How do you get in the high school? How do you shoot in the high school? How do you get rooms full of kids? You can't really do that. So instead, change to online school. And having that online school kind of raised a lot of interesting questions, like what happened with Ava that she's in the online school because she was in public high school? Uh, what happened with this character? Why is Maggie here? Where did she come from? All those questions were kind of swirling around and uh, in order to kind of find places to answer them, I took, I think, 10 note cards, wrote the names of the months that the story takes place over, and beneath that I would write, on as many index cards as I needed, I would label them, uh, what happens that month. Um, and I ended up with a very, very large pile of index cards sitting on my floor in my basement. And it was all the technical information. It gave me all the uh, clinical sort of, like if you read it in a book, like a history book type uh, of information. I knew where everyone was at what time, but none of the emotion was there yet. And again, this was in, this was probably in January when we moved to this house that I started doing the note cards. When I started writing in December, I started doing a vomit pass in conjunction with these notes that I was taking. And around the end of January, I kind of hit a wall on page 50. I didn't know what emotional uh, spark would continue the rest of the story. I knew what was supposed to happen, but I didn't know why it was gonna happen. And I was also missing, I knew what the ending was in sort of this vague, it ends here, but I didn't know what the actual ending was. So I talked with Bree, we went out, and over dinner we kind of talked about it, and we came to the ending that is in the final script. And once I had that goal, I knew, I knew the steps I needed to take to get there. So, I, uh, by March 2nd, March 2nd is when I finished the script, the initial first vomit pass of Ava. It was 144 pages. And uh, just for reference, uh, each page is about a minute of screen time. So it would have been two and a half hours long, two hours and 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, and also, it wasn't good. It was very clunky, um, but it had a lot of the feeling that I was looking for. It felt right, it just wasn't done yet. Um, and while that was happening, I also had this problem, sort of, in, in, the side, in, in, in the side of my mind, where when I started writing the script, I didn't have any people in mind because, you know, the characters are 17, I don't really know any 17-year-olds, I didn't really have any, anyone in mind. But as I'm writing, I remembered, um, I, I, I photographed for a local theater a few years ago for uh, their production of The Crucible. And the girl who played Abigail, I remember watching her during the rehearsals and I really, really liked her. And I got to work with her for like half an hour on a video and I liked working with her. And I thought about it and I'm like, you know what, I should, it's way too early. It's way too early to bring anybody on, but I kind of need to, I just need to ask. <laughs> because if she said no, great, then I can stop picturing her in my head. But if she said yes, even better, then I can, you know, kind of move forward and kind of write for her and talk to her about it. Luckily, she said yes, and uh, we will be, we'll do a whole separate video about the cast and everything sometime later. But uh, she liked it, she read the script. Um, I gave her the heads up that the first 50 pages are really a vomit pass, but she liked it anyway. And uh, I started asking her, like, you know, she's, I believe, 20 now, 2021, 20, 20 or 21. 
And uh, she, I, I kind of asked her like, do you know anyone else that could play the Maggie character, that could play Lexi, that could play these this age range? And she suggested um, another girl for the Maggie role. And she looked familiar, I didn't know why. It turns out she had also been, not in The Crucible, but in a different production from that same playhouse. I knew her as well. I had seen her, uh, mainly singing, but I had seen her and I was like, you know what, she might be a good foot. Okay, sure, let's let's go for that. Contacted her, she read the script, she liked it, and she was in. Uh, and then the last part of that trio actually just said yes about a week ago, which was great. I contacted her uh, maybe late March that same year. Uh, and if you know anything about March 2020, that was fun. Uh, but I, I contacted her, she read it, she enjoyed it, but she wasn't able to sign on yet. And uh, after we we talked finally this past month, January of 2021, uh, about the script, showed her the second draft, she, re she read it, she liked it, she responded well to the material. And after finding out uh, some scheduling stuff, she was able to say yes and be confident in it being able to be part of the script, which is part of the story, which is thrilling because I'm very happy to have her. Anyway, more about the writing. So the reason I, I stole this from uh, not the binder, but I saw this concept uh, from many videos that I've watched about writing where if you have these sort of tabs, they break up the ideas really nicely. The script is in here, it is actually the bottom orange tab, but there are also notes about the cast, about locations, about anything I'd need to know uh, sort of at a glance, which is really, really helpful, and it's all contained in this thing, has a nice little rubber band so it stays shut. That probably peaked. Very useful. Uh, all those note cards that I had, most of them have been thrown out because they're, they've been changed so many times, they're just not useful. But the ones I kept are somewhere over there. So after March 2nd, when I sent out the script and everybody had read it and I, and I had my answers sort of, um, I thought, great, this is awesome. I need to rewrite this because this is not done yet. And uh, that started a very, very long 10 month nine month rewriting process that was also coupled with the finishing of Mockingbird. Um, I'm not gonna talk about Mockingbird here. I've talked about it enough in my life over the past <laughs> three years, but very long story short, it had been in production hell. I finally had some time to work on it with quarantine and I finished that movie over the summer and fall of 2020, released it on Thanksgiving. During that time, I had been working on Ava, I had been working on character stuff, I had been working on beats that I wanted to work out, adding to the script slowly but surely. But my main issue was that first 50 pages. After page, you know, 51 to 144, that was the script. I was very happy with it. I knew where it was going. I was adding pieces to that, but that first 50 pages needed to go and needed to be replaced with 10 or 15 pages of something good rather than just kind of word vomit. After hard, just at, at page 50, just cutting it out, starting at page 51, I had to figure out the opening. After I released Mockingbird on Thanksgiving and I had an idea, <laughs> I wrote out this 15 page, 20 page prologue and it had surmised everything I was having problems with. Because before that, I had tried different intros. And I had tried the cliche, literally, just like an announcer, a newscaster, explains the plot to the audience. And just like, you know, you expect it to be, it was fucking terrible. But I needed to get that out because it was just an idea that I couldn't shake. I knew it would be bad, but I needed to get it out. Turns out it was bad, so I threw that out. I tried the alternate route, which was sort of a 20 minute short film a uh, silent film about depression. And for my friends that I sent it to that have those issues or have experienced those issues, they thought it was good. For the p friends who don't have those issues and don't understand that intimately, it just seemed boring. It didn't add up. And I didn't want to be alienating anybody with the opening, with the opening 20 minutes of my movie. So I came up with this new intro covered a lot of ground. It was striking the right tone. And on December 1st of 2020, I finished it. I exported it, sent it to the girl playing Ava, sent it to the girl playing Maggie, sent it to the girl playing Lexi. And so far, reviews have been good. We're still tweaking it. There's still, I think there's been a scene or two added to this that I haven't added in yet that we're working on. The writing process for Ava was very much a 
nose to the grindstone, just keep going kind of thing. There were no, I, I'm still waiting for the script that kind of comes out spontaneously. It really hasn't happened yet. There are days where you just write pages and pages and pages, but a lot of the time it's just a war of attrition. You just have to kind of wake up, turn on the computer, and sit down and figure it out. Just start writing a word, get a word out. And some days I just wrote a word and some days I wrote nine pages and then the next day I'd delete seven of them and I'd go and there's a lot of dummy drafts sitting on my computer that I haven't deleted um, of just different scenes, different pieces of the script that could have gone anywhere um, because some days you just need to get something out. And that was an, exor an exercise I tried was just dropping um, two characters from my script into a scene and just making them talk to each other. Not really worried about what comes before the scene or after the scene or where it fits in the narrative. Just take Ava, take Maggie, drop them in a room and make them talk to each other. And you would, you'd be surprised how much you can kind of get out of that. Um, a lot of really good dialogue came out of that. Important note, it wasn't planned to be a feature. Um, it just kind of came out that way. And when I saw that it works well, I, just decided, like, there's this there's this worry, like, are you ready to direct your first feature? The answer is optimistically, I don't know. The answer is realistically, hell no. However, I'm never gonna be ready until I do it, unfortunately. Uh, which means that this is the place where I pull the trigger, where I make the leap and I uh, start. It's scary, I'm very nervous about it, but my approach has been similar to the way I did Mockingbird, similar to the way I did Abigail, just keep going, much like the writing process. It's a war of attrition. If you don't take those steps, it's never gonna happen. So I've decided I'm 24, I'm turning 25 just before we start production. I want to do this. And that's kind of all there is to it. I'm just gonna do it the same way I did everything else, which is no budget, use open windows, use practical lights, use the exact same camera I'm shooting on now, uh, which this was my new camera from six years ago, uh, seven years ago now. Wow, great. Yeah, using the same, same approach I've always taken, write it, shoot it, edit it, repeat, I guess. Is that plagiarism? That's film right, but I mean, they're right. Write, shoot, edit, repeat, and it's, that's how you get shit done. So yeah, that's it. Um, don't have a sign off. I'm probably not gonna come up with one. Goodbye.